We knew number 10 staff had stocked up round the corner for the May 2020 Downing Street party, but the Prime Minister was doggedly refusing to say if he'd been at the do. Today, Boris Johnson surrendered to pressure from his MPs to come clean. Mr Speaker, I want to apologise. I know that millions of people across this country have made extraordinary sacrifices over the last 18 months. I know the anguish that they have been through, unable to mourn their relatives, unable to live their lives as they want or to do the things they love. And I know the rage they feel with me and with the government I lead when they think that in Downing Street itself the rules are not being properly followed by the people who make the rules. And though I cannot anticipate the conclusions of the current inquiry, I have learned enough to know that there were things we simply did not get right. And I must take responsibility. Number 10 is a big department with the garden as as an extension of the office, which has been in constant use because of the role of fresh air in stopping the virus. And when I went into that garden just after six on the 20th of May 2020 to thank groups of staff before going back into my office 25 minutes later to continue working, I believed implicitly that this was a work event. But Mr Speaker, with hindsight, I should have sent everyone back inside. I should have found some other way to thank them. And I should have recognised that even if it could be said technically to fall within the guidance, there would be millions and millions of people who simply would not see it that way, people who suffered terribly, people who were forbidden from meeting loved ones at all, inside or outside. And to them and to this House, I offer my heartfelt apologies. He'd now confessed, although he emphasised he'd only been at the event for 25 minutes, and he'd apologised. But he was apologising for a bad impression given. He insisted and still thought he'd obeyed the law. But it was enough for him to escape what some think could have been swift political death. I think everything depended on the first question, or even the preliminary to the first question. And he, the mood was that tense. Oh, it was. And if he hadn't um, come clean about his involvement in the party, uh, then I think um, he would have been massacred. Massacred in the remaining questions and maybe by his MPs soon after. I think that would have been... I it mean, was yes, hanging by a thread. Yeah, I think so. I think so. It wasn't enough for some, though, including the leader of the Scottish Conservatives. He said with hindsight he would have done things differently, which for me is a, an acceptance from the Prime Minister that it was wrong and therefore I don't want to be in this position, but I am in the position now where I don't think he can continue as leader of the Conservatives. Outside Parliament, protesters mocked the Prime Minister. Inside, the Labour leader said he must go. His defence, his defence that he didn't realise he was at a party <laughs> it, it, it is so ridiculous that it's actually offensive to the British public. He's finally been forced to admit what everyone knew, that when the whole country was locked down, he was hosting boozy parties in Downing Street. Yes. Is he now going to do the decent thing and resign? Yes. I, I, want to, I want to repeat that uh, I thought it was a, a work event, and, and Mrs Speaker, uh, I, 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 regret, I regret very much, I regret very much that we did not do things differently. Exactly. It started with reports of boozy parties in Downing Street during lockdown. The Prime Minister pretended that he had been assured there were no parties. Yeah. How that fits with his defence out, I do not know. Exactly. Then the video landed, blowing the Prime Minister's first defence out of the water. So then he pretended, he pretended, he was sickened and furious about the parties. Now it turns out he was at the parties all along. Yeah. Can't the Prime Minister see why the British public think he's lying through his teeth? Yeah. Mr Speaker, it's, it's up to the right honourable gentleman to choose how he uh, conducts himself in this, uh, in this place. Uh, he's wrong. 
Labour MPs mocked the Prime Minister, talking about Keir Starmer's improper conduct. Boris Johnson will be hoping his apology today will bring back traditionally supportive newspapers who turned on him this morning and calm nerves amongst Tory MPs. Was that enough? Uh, it was possibly enough for half time. The country is annoyed. The country feels that it's been played. The country feels that it's been taken for fools. You've never put in one of those letters to the 22 chairman I have calling not. for a vote of no, no confidence in a leader. Can you categorically rule out that you won't put in such a letter for this leader? Well, I, I would say never, you know, one can never say never. The lockdown socialising that happened over this wall has already galvanised some Tory MPs to write letters demanding a vote of no confidence in Boris Johnson. The Prime Minister hopes he's done enough to keep the number of letters down below the trigger point for now. And Gary's here in Downing Street with me now. Gary, are there any more developments tonight? Well, talking to Tory MPs, you get the impression, serious impression, that Boris Johnson really did have a near political death experience there in the House of Commons chamber today if he had not apologised. They were sitting behind him arrayed like a sort of sullen hanging jury. Things could have deteriorated very fast. As it is, he's done enough to buy himself some time, but there are some serious question marks over how much time. 54 letters is the threshold you need to trigger a vote of no confidence. You can trigger a vote of no confidence and not win it. Um, that can happen, but I don't think the, the envelopes going into uh, uh, demanding a vote of no confidence have remotely reached that level, but they have gone up in the last uh, few hours. And I think a couple of other things that really strike you today. The Scottish Tories, the senior figures in the Scottish Tories, in revolt against their party leader at a time of a giant constitutional question mark over Scotland is an extraordinary position to be in. And then there's this quotation from one of the rebels, uh, one of the people who's called for the Prime Minister to go, William Ragg, not exactly close to the Prime Minister, but the phrase he used, I am worn out defending the indefensible. I've heard similar phrases today from people who did vote for the Prime Minister as party leader, and that really isn't good for his medium to long-term future.